Mascots, a person or thing that is supposed to bring good luck, the underdogs of sports. These guys bring the fun and entertainment to sports, while also representing the brand they associate with. Mascots have been around longer than you think, as they have actually been around since the late 1800s, in the form of live animals and cartoony drawings or logos. In the 1970s, mascots quickly took off with the popularity of the San Diego Chicken and the Philly Fanatic. But I'm not talking about any of those mascots today. Today we are heading to the state of Missouri. More specifically, we are heading to the University of Missouri, located in Columbia, Missouri, where a certain not-so-ferocious feline mascot lives. And his name is Truman the Tiger. This larger-than-life big cat has been around Missouri for over 30 years, delighting and entertaining sports fans everywhere, and becoming one of the most underappreciated tiger mascots of all time. Although one of you guys kept harassing me in my comments section to do a video on this guy. So here you go. I hope you're happy. In this video, I will be going over the evolution of Truman and the other tiger mascots of Mizzou. From the highs to the lows, from the past to the present. This is the history of Truman the Tiger, the University of Missouri's beloved mascot. So before we talk about this terrific tiger, I want to quickly go over the history of the University of Missouri, as well as where the tiger mascot nickname came from. The University of Missouri, also known as Mizzou, was founded on February 11, 1839, as the first public university west of the Mississippi River. It is located in the city of Columbia, not Jefferson City even though that is the state capital, but that's pretty normal for colleges named after states. The campus is a whopping 1,262 acres and currently has around 31,401 students enrolled as of fall 2021. As for the tiger being chosen as the mascot, it's actually quite an interesting story. The story for how the tiger became Mizzou's mascot dates back to 1864, when during the American Civil War, the university suspended operations and residents of Columbia formed a home guard to protect their city from destruction by the Confederate bushwhackers. The home guard was nicknamed the Fighting Tigers of Columbia. This is because, just like real tigers, the group had a steadfast readiness to fight against the bushwhackers. Fast forward to a few decades after the war, in 1890, the university started a football program, and someone decided to name the team the Tigers, as a nod to the Colombians who defended Missouri all those years back. And that's where our mascot story begins. Now unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any mascot information from the 1890s to the 1930s, but I wouldn't be surprised if one did exist whether that be a person in a costume or a real tiger. They did have a few logos used around this time depicting tigers, some looking better than others. But now let's fast forward to the 1940s, when the first Mizzou mascot was spotted. The earliest known sighting of a Mizzou tiger mascot costume was in the 1940s, not sure exactly what year it was, but it was definitely in this decade. The first mascot was played by members of the Tiger Claws Pep Squad. The original Tiger looked way different compared to the Truman we know today. The first costume consisted of a yellow jumpsuit with painted on black stripes and a paper mache head. There were no gloves, and the performer just wore their normal shoes. Now I immediately know what you guys are thinking. Yes, this guy is terrifying, but cut him some slack. Almost all mascots around this time period looked creepy due to limited materials. But yes, I will admit, he does look kind of scary. He's giving off Nittany Lion vibes. Actually, some of you guys pointed out that this particular version of Mizzou's mascot looks very similar to the early Cincinnati Bengals mascot from 1973. They look almost identical, to the point where I'm wondering if they were made by the same person or company. Or maybe this was just the standard tiger mascot costume used at the time. So unfortunately, that's all I really have on this Missouri mascot suit. Despite it being around for many decades, there's barely any photos or information on it. 
I was, however, able to find some of the people who played this tiger mascot in the 50s and 60s, and unlike other colleges who primarily had men play the mascot, the two people I found are both women, though men also played the mascot at some times. The first one to bring up is Susan Bierman. She played the mascot from September 1958 till January 1961. Interestingly, I found her Facebook, and in her bio she mentions that she was the first Mizzou mascot. Which is kind of inaccurate, since the first mascot was in the 1940s, when she wasn't the mascot till the late 50s. So either the university is wrong when they said the first mascot was in the 40s, or maybe Susan is referring to being the first official mascot, and the one from the 40s was unofficial. Who knows? But Susan's favorite memory from being the Tiger mascot was when she went to the 1961 Orange Bowl, where Mizzou beat the Navy Midshipmen 21-14. The last person I want to bring up is a woman named Penny Wiseman. She played the Tiger mascot throughout the early 60s. The reason I bring her up is because she was one of the shortest performers to play the mascot at a height of 4 foot 10. This almost would never happen today, since you have to be a certain height to play any college mascot. But back in the 50s and 60s, anybody, no matter the height, can play the mascot. And while on the topic of comparing mascots from the past to the present, nowadays it's a huge cardinal rule for any mascot not to break character. That includes taking off the head. But back in the day, it was not uncommon for mascots to take off their heads and have their identity known by anyone. While that is all the information I could find on the mascot costumes used, I thought I would bring up some logos and artwork used around the 50s and 60s depicting Mizzou Tigers. Those count as mascots, right? First up we have this logo that was used for about a decade, beginning in the 1950s. I'm not a big fan of this logo, since it looks a little goofy compared to the previous designs. It kind of reminds me of a car decal, or a vintage circus poster. Speaking of circus, look at this clown. Okay, I actually really like this logo. It's got that vintage college logo charm. However, Mizzou isn't the school to originate this logo, and they weren't even the only ones to use it, as pretty much every college with a tiger mascot used this logo at some point in their history. Auburn, Clemson, LSU, everybody and their mother had used this tiger head logo. Some early Mizzou marketing artwork was designed by famous St. Louis cartoonist Amadi Walschlanger. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. He began doing art for the university beginning in the 1930s, all the way up until the early 90s. Some of my favorite pieces of artwork he did was the covers for many Missouri football game programs. He did those from 1959 till around the late 80s, early 90s. I really love these because they're just so entertaining to look at and I wish they did comics with this tiger. Finally, this one is surprising. One cartoon Mizzou mascot was created by an even bigger cartoonist than Amity. None other than Charles Schultz. Yes, THE Charles Schultz, aka the man responsible for creating Charlie Brown, Snoopy, and all the other Peanuts characters, made his own Mizzou tiger mascot for the 1956 Homecoming edition of The Man Eater, which is Mizzou's newsletter. Sadly, it wasn't used much soon after it was created. Now that I have discussed all the logos and artwork from this time period related to Mizzou, let's go back to the actual mascot costumes. So this particular tiger mascot costume wasn't entirely retired in the late 60s, but instead something else occurred during this era. The Mizzou tiger got married. Beginning in the late 60s, the number of Mizzou Tiger mascot characters doubled. Now there were two of them. I have no clue why they decided to add another mascot, but hey, the more the merrier. Maybe so many people wanted to play the mascot but only a few got the role, so they made another one to meet the demand. Now originally, it was just two of the same Tiger mascot we already talked about in the last part. Literally the two Tigers were identical twins. However. This didn't last too long, as the Siamese Twin Tigers were retired in the early 70s. 
Starting in the 1970s, Mizzou started to do something different with their tiger mascots, as well as the logos. They no longer wanted to use cartoony tiger logos or crappy homemade paper mache costumes. They wanted real tigers. Tigers that actually represented the school and looked ferocious. So they created a couple of new logos depicting a more realistic looking tiger that was supposed to be feared by opposing teams. They took this tiger mascot rebrand so seriously that they even tried to get a real live tiger to be the mascot. Back in 1973, the university reached out to the Dickerson Park Zoo in Springfield, Missouri to borrow one of their tigers named Mr. Stripe and have him be the Mizzou mascot for a football game. Unfortunately, plans fell through when they were rejected by the zoo. The reason they were rejected was because the zoo director would have to accompany the tiger, and he didn't feel like going that day, so they rejected the university's offer. Much to the dismay of fans and students, but with that being said, they still had tiger mascots at the game. In the early 70s, both Mizzou tiger mascot characters received a major upgrade. No longer would they just be the same tiger cloned, but now they would be two different tiger mascots and would have their own character traits as opposed to just being tigers. The main tiger mascot was named Big Tiger, and his girlfriend, wife, sidekick, I'm not sure, but the other tiger mascot was now a female character named Little Tiger, L-I-L. -L. These new costumes did away with the ugly paper mache suits of the past and now featured large fiberglass heads with slightly cartoony looks. Big Tiger had a large smile with his tongue sticking out and Little Tiger had a smaller head and wore a white Mizzou apron. And just like the previous costumes, these two costumes didn't have gloves and the performers just wore their normal shoes with the suit. Unfortunately, that's really all I have on these two particular costumes. They didn't last too long, being retired a few years later. Then around 1977 or 1978, they got redesigned again. There wasn't too many changes made, although the colors looked a little darker. Big Tiger occasionally wore basketball shorts, and Little Tiger would sometimes wear a cheerleader outfit. But the biggest change by far was their faces. And wow, that is terrifying. I wonder how many kids these two scared. Because I'm pissing myself looking at these. Why are they so horrifying? I mean, look at Lil Tiger. Her eyes are going in two different directions. Actually, I think I know why these two look the way they look. Remember, around this time the Mizzou logo looked like this. And when you look at the costume, it's very similar. This costume, despite looking like a scary Halloween mask, is accurate for the time. So you gotta applaud them for keeping the logo and mascot suit consistent. Before I talk about some of the mascot performers for these mascots, I found a real interesting incident that happened involving Big Tiger. Back in 1978, Big Tiger got into a big fight with the Iowa State Cyclones mascot, Cy the Cardinal, right before a football game between the two schools. It was just after the national anthem when the two mascots walked up to each other and according to the person playing Big Tiger, the Cardinal struck first, and that caused him to fight back in self-defense. He kicked and karate chopped that bird so much that $400 worth of damages was done to the Cyclone's mascot suit. The man in the tiger costume was disciplined, but I couldn't find out what the aftermath was. I'm guessing he was fired from being the mascot. While this incident wasn't caught on video, I did find this one photo of the fight in an old newspaper. Hey guys, this is post-production Nathan, just to give you a little, uh, update. While I was editing this video, I actually came across another interesting story about Lil Tiger. So it turns out the reason why she's wearing a cheerleader outfit in that 1980 footage is because apparently her apron was considered offensive and sexist by a lot of Mizzou students and as well as uh, Mizzou fans. So they changed her apron to a cheerleader outfit for the last few years that her and Big Tiger were around. So yeah, I thought I'd give you this little update since I found it really, really interesting. But anyway, back to the regular video. One more thing to mention with these mascots is to credit the people who portrayed them. I found one performer for both Tiger mascots. There were definitely more since each performer had an understudy, but these were the only two I could find. First, there's Steve Wendling, who was originally a cheerleader before becoming Big Tiger. 
He played the mascot from 1977 until 1978. His favorite memory was going out onto the middle of the football field to dance with his girlfriend. Then there's Deb Snellen. She played Little Tiger from the late 70s until 1979. Her favorite memories from her time as the mascot were always the ones where she got to interact with children, especially when visiting children's hospitals. And that's all there is to know on Big Tiger and Little Tiger. They were retired around 1981 when the next Tiger mascot was created, and this one you may or may not be familiar with. By the time the 1980s decade rolled around, the University of Missouri decided to do things the simple way. By that, I mean the logos and mascot suits were simplified. The era of having realistic looking logos came to an end, and now it was back to cartoony tigers. And by 1983, the logo was just a paw print with an M on it. With this new rebrand, the university retired Big Tiger and Little Tiger. Not only that, but they got rid of the idea of having two tiger mascots. Instead, they were just going to create one unisex tiger mascot suit. That means anyone of any gender can wear the costume. So how did this new tiger mascot turn out? Well, let's find out. The brand new unisex Missouri tiger mascot debuted in 1981 and was originally nameless. He was just a generic, slightly cartoony tiger. Going over the costume, I like this guy's head. He just looks so friendly and happy. I mean, he does look a little derpy, but whatever. I don't know if that's what the school wanted, but I don't mind it. The colors are kind of weird. I don't know if he's supposed to be yellow, but he looks tan in the photos. Just like the original costumes, this tiger has no belly detail, but unlike those costumes, this guy actually has both gloves and feet. He never did wear any jerseys, but sometimes, like in this photo, he did wear fancy outfits. So at this point, you may have noticed I've been referring to this particular mascot as just the tiger. Well, that's because for about three years, he didn't have a proper name. Yeah, despite giving names to the previous mascots, Mizzou for some reason didn't give this tiger a name. But that was about to change very soon. In 1984, two cheerleaders held a Name the Tiger contest on the university campus. This contest was created because they wanted to raise money to buy a carrying case for the mascot suit. So for only one dollar, any Mizzou student could submit a name for the mascot. The contest ran for a few weeks and at the end, a student won with the name we all know today, Truman. The name coming from Missouri native and former US President, Harry S. Truman. So from this point on, I will be referring to the tiger mascot as Truman. Before moving on to the next costume, I want to mention some miscellaneous information regarding this Truman costume. For starters, he was portrayed by four students, and one of them is quite interesting. Jackie Ablin, the mother of former left tackle for Mizzou, Alec Ablin, played Truman from the spring of 1984 to spring 1985. She was actually the first woman to play Truman, or when he officially became Truman, not counting the other two tiger mascots. Finally, unlike the other costumes in this video, I actually know what happened to this Truman costume after it was retired. Now I don't know if he's still there or not, but I found out at some point the original Truman suit is or was on display at the Mizzou store located in the student center on campus. If he's not there, then he's most likely in the storage somewhere. But anyway, let's get back to the timeline. Unfortunately for Truman, this version of him would be retired in 1985. He was then replaced by this thing. For some reason in 1985, the university decided to use a generic looking yellow tiger costume. I don't know who thought this was a good idea. Like you guys already had a decent looking costume already, so why did you have to make this thing? We're past this era of realistic tigers now. Not surprisingly, this version of Truman only lasted a single season and was gone by 1986. Not many people liked this version, but at least he kind of tried. Thankfully, by the following year, Missouri finally got their mascot right. So much so, he stuck around even to this day. I'm sure you already know who I'm talking about.
University of Missouri alumni know the road to success is paved in black and gold. Z-O-U. Z-O-U. Though you leave Mizzou, Mizzou will never leave you. Z-O-U. Forever. After the failure of the last 1985 costume, Mizzou decided to go back to the drawing board and get a proper mascot. In 1986, Jack Lango, the former athletic director for Missouri, along with a few other men, sought ways to improve Truman and his personality. They too didn't like how the former mascot was quote-unquote too wimpy and lacked character. I absolutely agree with that. I mean, just look at this dude unless they're talking about the old 1981 costume, which for that, I disagree with their statement on it being wimpy. But anyway, the costume design, caricature, image, material, and color was all going to change. So after coming up with a design, they sent it to a manufacturer for production of the costume. And after months of hard work, Missouri was finally ready to unveil the brand new Truman the Tiger. The new version of Truman the Tiger debut on Saturday, September 13, 1986 at a football game between Mizzou and Utah State. Truman actually had a pretty grand entrance for his debut. He burst through a door onto the football field to the Rocky theme and started punching in the air. This Tiger was ready to earn his stripes on the football field. Almost immediately, this version of the mascot became an instant success, being very well received by Mizzou fans. He was an instant win. He was also a win for Mizzou's football team, since they beat Utah State that day, 24-10. And of course, since this is the modern Truman, there's obviously a ton of information and photos on him. Talking about the costume, one thing I like about this timeline is that despite all of Missouri's Tigers looking very different from each other, they're all still pretty simple designs. Starting with the head, this new Truman ditches the taxidermy look of the last costume and goes back to looking cartoony once again. His eyes are much larger, and so is his nose. His mouth is in a more closed position, and his ears are bigger. He also has more white details. His muzzle is interesting since it's supposed to be yellow, but the costume makes it look brown, probably because that might be where the person inside looks out of. As for his body, it's pretty basic, consisting of a yellow fabric, like the rest of the suit, a larger white stomach and very thin tiger stripes all over. He's got yellow gloves with paw details, simple looking large tiger feet, and a long tail with a white tip on the end. His tail is so long that one of his many moves is spinning his tail around. And finally, he's usually naked, but sometimes he wears a football or basketball jersey. Oh, by the way, I couldn't find what mascot company made Truman. Speaking of jerseys, I might as well go over some of the alternative costumes for Truman. Now, I couldn't find all of them, but I did find a good bunch. First, something to mention regarding Truman's face is that when he was first introduced, he looked kind of angry, but by 1990, he started to smile. Also, the first versions of the costumes had larger features, like a bigger nose, and the snout was bulkier. The current costume has more of a flat face with a smaller nose, other than that, the costume never really changed at all since 1986, so I'm not going to mention the rest of his normal costume evolution, since there's very little that changed. As for outfits, I already mentioned the different jerseys, but he also has worn several Mizzou-related t-shirts. Most aren't that special, just regular t-shirts anyone can buy. For unique outfits, here he is in a firefighter hat. Here he is in his birthday suit. Not that kind of birthday suit, sicko. Here he is in a tuxedo. Now he's in a breast cancer awareness shirt. Here's a similar shirt. Here he is in a red jersey. Finally, here's some outfits from nationals and competitions. Here's a nice golden tuxedo Truman wears often. Here he is in a homeless person outfit? It's ripped up clothes. Last year he did a skit where he was dressed as a farmer. And finally, this year he wore a really cool space suit. Oh, and I almost forgot the Superman costume. Because Missouri had finally gotten a proper and well-loved mascot, they did the obvious thing. 
and that's the fact that he got to do more things than any other Mizzou mascot. He also went to more events. He started going to cheer and mascot nationals and competitions where he would do funny and entertaining skits, like in 2022 Truman dressed in a farmer outfit and reenacted The Wizard of Oz. Or this year, actually a few weeks ago, his skit was space themed. Truman earned several awards throughout these events. He won Best Mascot in the Nation four times in 1989, 2003, 2004, and 2014. Truman was also a finalist in the 2012 Capital One Mascot Challenge, in which there was a big marketing push to vote for him to win. Sadly, he lost to Raider Red from Texas Tech. When he's not competing in any competitions, he's probably at another event. Whether it's a public or private event, Truman makes up to 35 appearances a month. That's over 400 appearances a year. You will mostly find him at Missouri games. During football, he comes out with the team while riding atop of a yellow Mizzou decorated vintage fire truck. Also, before the football game, Truman attends the Missouri Tiger Walk. This is a mini parade where the football players walk from the Mizzou Athletic Training Complex to the locker rooms at Faroe Field. This happens about two hours before kickoff. During basketball games, sometimes Truman will enter the arena by being lowered from the rafters while doing a stunt. And finally, Truman can be booked out for any major special occasions, such as visiting children's hospitals, or even being able to attend your wedding. Truman wasn't the only mascot change the university made, as they also went and updated their logo from the paw print to the now iconic tiger head. This logo first debuted in 1999 and was created by St. Louis-based company Bush Creative Services. There's actually a few different variant logos featuring the tiger head. A little over a decade earlier, right after Truman was first unveiled, in 1986, Mizzou created an alternative logo which is a caricature of Truman. It went on to be used for over 35 years, in many different ways, before finally being updated to look like the current mascot suit in 2021. Finally, the same year Missouri introduced their current logo, they started a new conservation program called Mizzou Tigers for Tigers. This program helps educate people on protecting and preserving real tigers in the wild. It was the first school with a tiger mascot to create such program. Similarly, in 2017, Missouri, Clemson, Auburn, and LSU joined together to create another program called U.S. Tiger University Consort, with the same agenda and goals. I know these weren't related to the logos, but I thought they were still worth mentioning, and I didn't have any other section to put them in. One thing that is important to a mascot is merchandise. Sports teams create merchandise based off their mascots all the time, and Missouri was no different. Now I'm not sure if any merchandise of the original mascots exist, but usually older Mizzou merch is just a generic tiger, but it really took off with Truman. There were plush dolls, statues, several types of inflatables, golf equipment, bobbleheads, Christmas ornaments, and even this weird Lego type figure, as well as this Lego type buildable figure. There's even a kid's Halloween costume. Truman also made a few video game appearances, the most famous of which is in NCAA Football 13 and NCAA Football 14, where you can have a team of mascots in the mascot mashup mode. So for Missouri, you could have a team of Trumans go against another team's mascot. Finally, there is also several children's books based on or centered around Truman, or primarily feature him. One last thing, there's been quite a few interesting stories and events revolving around Truman. Don't worry, they're all pretty funny and lighthearted, with the exception of one, but we'll get to that later. Back in 2014, just like everyone else around the world, Truman participated in the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Not many mascots did this challenge, since most costumes aren't waterproof, but that didn't stop Truman from going all out. As part of the challenge, you have to nominate three others, and Truman went ahead and nominated Brad Pitt, Sheryl Crow, and John Hamm, all of which were graduates of Mizzou. Two notable Truman events occurred in 2016. First, this year happened to mark Truman's 30th birthday, and Mizzou went all out for his big day. During a game between Missouri and East Michigan, Truman popped out of a large cake prop 
and everybody sang happy birthday to him. But that's not all, as the university also decided to have a reunion between all the former Truman performers from the past. They all came together and ran out onto the field just after a touchdown and performed Truman's signature push-up move. By the way, Mizzou beat East Michigan in that game, 61-21. Speaking of push-ups, that actually leads into my next story. So like I mentioned, one of Truman's signature moves is doing push-ups after the team scores. The number of push-ups he does is based on what the current score is. Well, during a football game between Missouri and Delaware State, Truman made news after he did a whopping 495 push-ups. This is because Mizzou completely destroyed Delaware State with a score of 79-0. Truman was even named player of the game by ESPN. Keep in mind, the temperature for that game was in the mid-80s, so it probably felt like hell for whoever is in the costume, and doing almost 500 push-ups in that suit probably added fuel to the fire. They deserve a round of applause. The most famous story involving Truman was a complete accident, but still memorable. Back in 2011, the annual Independence Bowl was getting ready to be played in Louisiana. It was between Missouri and North Carolina, and the trophy had just arrived, but there was one problem. The trophy was broken. So now you're probably wondering who or what broke it. Well, it was none other than Truman himself. Yes, Truman accidentally broke the trophy after he dropped it during a photo shoot. He even admitted it when somebody asked him if he broke it, he shook his head yes. Thankfully, Mizzou won the Independence Bowl 41-24, so no one was really mad at Truman. Most saw the humor in it. I don't think Truman had to pay for repairs, and no one was punished. Alright, now I need to address the elephant in the room. No, not that one, I already did a video on him. I have to mention the story that isn't so lighthearted and funny. It's a little more disturbing. I wasn't going to talk about this since I'm worried about my monetization, but since I know for a fact someone might mention it in the comments of this video, I thought it was worth discussing. And plus, this particular video isn't getting monetized. So with that out of the way, let me answer this question. Where did this photo of Truman smoking a bong come from, and why the hell was this ever okay? In case you didn't know, since around 2013, this photo of Truman smoking out of a bong has been floating around the internet and no one knows where it came from. And for the most part, it's kind of a mystery, but I might have found out about its origins. So the backstory behind this was apparently at some point in time, many, many years ago, a group of cheerleaders got together and made a calendar of Truman doing very inappropriate things. And this is one of the photos that came from that calendar. Although one former student who was there said that they didn't remember a bong being there. So what's my opinion on this photo? I hate it. I mean, I guess it could be kind of funny, but it's still shocking to see a kid-friendly mascot doing nasty things like this. I should also clarify that I do not promote or suggest the use of drugs like weed, marijuana, or cocaine, or any of that crap. Nor do I ever recommend doing drugs. Don't do drugs ever, Nathan says. And that brings us to today. As of April 2023, Truman is still here representing Missouri Tigers at all times. It also seems like he's cleaned up his life after that disturbing photo, so good for him. But we're not quite done just yet, because there's more to talk about. What if I told you that Truman wasn't alone in representing Mizzou? Hi, I'm Missouri Governor Jay Nixon, and I'm here today with Missouri's favorite healthy cat, Truman. Making a basket can win the game, but making the change to stop smoking can save your life. Smoking can seriously harm your health, causing cancer, heart disease, and stroke. But every day in our country, more than 3,500 young people start smoking, and once you start, it's hard to stop. Be a healthy cat, like Truman, by quitting today. For free help with quitting tobacco, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Did you guys know Mizzou has other tiger mascots that are used alongside Truman? They aren't nearly as popular or well-known as Truman is, but they're still noteworthy to bring up in this video. I mean, I am covering every Mizzou mascot. 
There's not too many of them, only a couple, and one of them is actually a proposed mascot but was cancelled. I guess I should probably start with the cancelled tiger mascot, since that's the one you guys are probably the most interested in. So back in 2010, a Mizzou student leader started a campaign for the university to get a real live tiger mascot to replace Truman. This wasn't a joke, this was a real thing that was considered. They wanted a real tiger on campus, like how LSU has one. Unfortunately, this plan never went through, mostly because it would have been way too expensive, costing about $2 million. So even though they might have had a real tiger mascot several decades ago, it wasn't going to happen in the 2010s. Now the only real tigers in Missouri are at their great zoos. Speaking of zoos, did you know the Kansas City Zoo has its own Mizzou tiger mascot? Well, it's not quite a mascot, but rather on their carousel, they have a tiger with a Mizzou-themed saddle. Another mascot is this guy. This is TJ, aka Truman Jr., and he's the mascot of the University of Missouri's Children's Hospital. He's meant to be a younger and more child-friendly mascot, made specifically for young children. I don't know, actually, if he's supposed to be Truman as a kid, or if he's Truman's son. I don't think that has ever been brought up, but it's probably not important. What is important is that this character actually got a mascot costume made. And speaking of the costume, let's talk about that and the overall design. Overall, this design is meant to be simple and clean, and the costume does reflect that. Starting with the head, it's a lot more short and stubby compared to Truman's, and it's a lot rounder too. His eyes are a little larger, but I don't like how on the costume, the eyes are darker, but that's probably just because it's mesh. I do like how the stripes on the top look like a hairstyle. As for his body, again, it's a little rounder than Truman, and much more simplified. That also applies to his stripes, and the lack of detail on the feet. One thing that is interesting is that the cartoon design has tan belly fur, while the costume has white belly fur. That's strange. Also. While the cartoon version is yellow, the mascot suit is orange, but I'm not concerned about that since that also applies to Truman as well. One last thing to mention about TJ is that he does have an alternative outfit. Sometimes he can be seen wearing a doctor's coat, because he is a hospital mascot. TJ is still used by Mizzou as of 2023, but he doesn't appear at games or any Mizzou sporting events. You can only find him at the University of Missouri's Children's Hospital. And this talk of a mascot being exclusive to one place is a perfect segue into the next mascot. Now I'm going to be cheating a little bit with this next mascot, because it doesn't really count, since it's not a real animal or a person in a costume. Now we all know Mizzou has quite a few tiger statues on their campus, but I'm not talking about any of those. What I am talking about is an art piece that was on campus for about a decade. This art piece almost immediately became so controversial, it led to lawsuits and several legal battles. This is the story of the Tiger Spot. Back in the year 2001, a large tiger mosaic was unveiled on Missouri's campus. It was called the Tiger Spot, and was created by a local artist named Paul Jackson. The art piece was made up of over 300,000 tiles and spanned about 700 square feet. It was located in the front of the Elias Library. Unfortunately, because Missouri weather is kind of crazy and unpredictable, the mosaic almost immediately started to break and decay. The university was even considering relocating the art piece, even though it was just introduced. They eventually started hiring third-party companies to fix the art piece. The university then decided it wasn't worth fixing the art, so they put a large white tarp over it and once again proposed removing it. This angered Paul Jackson, the artist behind the mosaic, so much he sued the school, claiming he owned the copyrights to the art and only he could make decisions about it. It wasn't until 2012 when a $125,000 settlement was reached and the large tiger spot mosaic was removed. Most people and students didn't care that it was gone, as many viewed it as nothing more than an eyesore. I mean, it is a nice looking piece, but they definitely should have done more to preserve it. 
The second to last mascot to bring up is one that is really strange. It's a recent costume, but I couldn't find much about it. I'm not even sure where this costume came from, or what it's supposed to be. You're probably wondering why I haven't showed a photo of it yet. Well, that's because it looks like this. Where do I begin with this? Well, for starters, it's not that bad. It just looks... off. Is it Truman? Or someone else? Well, actually, according to this Twitter post, his name is Arthur. But is that the character, or the person inside the costume's name? I really want to know more about this guy, and it's a shame there's not much info on him. The last mascot Mizzou has is this guy. Yes, this is an inflatable mascot costume. If you for some reason don't know about these legendary creatures, then I don't know what to say. They're just mascot costumes that are inflated. Think of an inflatable dinosaur costume, but not as restricting. The most famous inflatable mascots are the ones used by the NBA, but several colleges have them too, such as Louisville, or in this video's case, Mizzou. He was first introduced around 2017, and while you may think that this is just an inflatable version of Truman, since, you know, it looks exactly like him, that's actually not the case. This guy is supposed to be a completely new mascot. His name is Waltz, named after the state song of Missouri, the Missouri Waltz, which is also played by Mizzou's band. He also wears jersey number 39 as a nod to when the university was founded in 1839. He's not used too much, but it's always a blast when he shows up. I mean, not everyone can bounce on their head. So that is all the other Mizzou mascots used by, or considered by, the University of Missouri. And that's pretty much everything there is to know about every Missouri Tiger mascot, including Truman. But now let's say one of you guys watching this video is planning on going to Mizzou, and are interested in playing the role of Truman the Tiger. Well, for this next and final chapter, it's just for you, as I'm going to give some tips and tricks into becoming the mascot of the University of Missouri. Being a college mascot isn't easy. Between the fans, the games, and the tailgates, a tiger's den can fill up fast. But Truman knows Storage Mart has got his back. With a variety of storage unit sizes and convenient locations, Storage Mart will keep all your foam fingers safe and secure. Perhaps you've got something bigger. It's also a great place to park your party bus between tailgates. So, Mizzou fans, take it from Truman. Rent your storage unit at storage-mart.com today. Proud sponsor of Mizzou Athletics. So, you want to be one of the lucky few people to portray Truman for the University of Missouri. Well, listen up, because I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to succeed. Now, unfortunately, I don't know entirely how the tryout process for Truman is handled, but I will still give you some information about what I do know and how you can become a great Truman. Also, if there's any former Trumans that see this video, feel free to mention how the audition process actually is, and if I got anything wrong. First and foremost, you need to know Truman's personality, and if you've made it this far into the video, then you probably know Truman a lot by now. He's basically Missouri's biggest fan, he's a die-hard fan, and always wants to have fun. Next, most of what Truman does is improvised, so improvisation is key. The better you are at improvising, the better your chances will be at becoming Truman. Finally, here's some general information about what to expect during the tryouts. Well, first off, the tryouts are usually held around late March or April, and obviously you have to be a Mizzou student to try out. You are asked several trivia questions about the university's history that you must know, and there's also a basic interview like any other job. You are then tested on how you were able to move around inside the Truman costume. And so, if you are able to pass all the tests and tryouts, then congratulations, you are now one of only five people to get to play Truman the Tiger. Once you become Truman, there's more you need to know than what you're told at the tryouts, and by the athletic department. For example, you have to have a schedule on what days you are available, and constantly consult with other Truman performers, 
just so they know who's playing Truman that day. We can't have two Trumans running around, can we? Basically what I'm saying is that you have to have a drop of the hat same day availability, and if you aren't able to make it to an appearance, then you are responsible for finding a replacement performer. But don't worry, the Truman performers all have meetings with the coaching staff on Monday nights to organize such a schedule. But the most important thing to remember about playing Truman is to have fun. Truman is a fun guy, and you should reflect that. Go wild, go crazy. No one knows it's you in the costume, so let loose. Good luck! That's pretty much all I have to say regarding playing Truman. So to end off this long video, I want to quickly mention a few of Truman's past performers. After all, if it wasn't for them, Truman wouldn't be what he is today. First, there's Tom Wellahan, who was actually the main kicker for Missouri's football team in the 1980s. He played Truman in the late 80s, but only ever did basketball since, well, you know, he was on the football team. Next, there's Greg Razor, who played Truman in the early 2000s. The reason I bring him up is because he was the guy who played Truman during that historic four-overtime basketball game between Mizzou and Iowa State in 2001. This game that lasted over four hours ended with Mizzou winning, and Greg was suited as Truman the entire time. By the end of the second overtime, a security guard was having to constantly run back and forth with water to help Greg to keep him from passing out. Luckily, he pushed through. Then there's John Lyman, who played Truman from 2004 to 2007. His favorite memories included riding atop of a fire truck and going to a white man air force base and getting to go inside of a B-2 bomber plane. The second to last person to bring up is Cole Shubb, who played Truman from 2015 to 2019. He was actually the guy who played Truman during Truman's 30th birthday and was the one who popped out of the giant cake prop. That is also his favorite memory. But by far, the most well-known performer of Truman is someone very familiar to the mascot community, and that performer was a man named Dan Mears. He played Truman from 1987 up until 1990, and was the performer who got Truman a mascot award in 1989. He later went on to be the St. Louis Cardinals mascot, and is most famously known for portraying the Kansas City Chiefs mascot, a role he continues to play to this day. We will learn more about him in the history episode I'm doing on Casey Wolf later this year. And the very last thing to bring up is that when a Truman performer graduates, they sometimes get to wear Truman's feet to the ceremony, just to show people that they were Truman. And with that, this officially concludes the history of Truman the Tiger. And there you have it. The History of Truman, the University of Missouri or Mizzou's Tiger Mascot. I do apologize for this video being really long. Truman has an extremely large history, a way longer history than I was expecting, but I guess college mascots just have that. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below which version of Truman or any of the Mizzou mascots was your favorite. Also, let me know if there are any other college mascots you want me to make history videos on. Just don't say the Kentucky Wildcat, because I have forbidden myself to do that one. And if you do suggest the Kentucky Wildcat, then you might want to sleep with one eye open. But any other mascot I will happily do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on the History of Series. Bye bye! You know the worst thing about Arkansas? What's that? It's got Kansas in it. No, we're not knocking on the door. We're busting in. Place. Rock chalk? Yeah, how's it taste? Cause it must be hard to sing when Radliff throws down in your face. Say your grace. 
cause you'll be sorry in this title race We welcome rivalry, but they're too scared to come back to our place Yeah, we're marching straight into this madness Beating top 20 teams by almost 40, not cause they're bad It's just the real deal when you face it's a tragic Cause you'll be dropping and ranking so fast, you'll think it's magic Yeah, you'll run from us faster than Pressy can drive on you English rain in threes like he needs it to survive It's true, Dimmon will strip you and your girl And he'll push the flow to see more comes in and Superman's no, that oh. I all the Out to Demon for the three. English is his last name. Ballin's his degree. Ball up, throw down. Como is a hood. Can't make a big shot. Zaya Taylor could. SEC, here we come. Wow, cast watch out, son. You can have your one and done, but I'll take Michael Dixon. Yeah, we have control of the game. It's on tap, but it's Corona, not past. To say some crappy IU rap. Last but not least, Jared Sutton is true. He only knows one thing: how to put it in the hoop. So everyone rise up like an oop and say M I C C O. You when know, I'm knocking on the door, we're busting in. Yeah, this is Missouri, we ain't taking our time